Hey guys, in this video I am going to show you how I am making something close enough to espresso with a $21 mocha pot from Amazon. Okay, I'm going to show you guys my first mistake. So, I, I have to stop giving Starbucks my money. I went for years without going to Starbucks regularly. I would go maybe once every few months and I just wasn't drinking coffee very often. And for some reason, the last couple of months, it is like for me to function and get out of bed, I need caffeine, I need coffee, and I need Starbucks specifically because there's something about that espresso bitch, okay? It's the espresso. It's, it doesn't matter. I have a drip coffee maker. It's, it's okay. It's all right. I don't like cold brew coffee. It tastes like stale ashes to me. Anyways, so I was like, okay, how do I make espresso cheap? Because if you look at espresso makers, bitch, they're fucking expensive, and I'm going to get to that later on. But if you're like me, you're thinking like, oh, it's just me making espresso, so I'm just going to get like a little teeny tiny espresso maker. I bought this little bitch. This thing is like 12 bucks on Amazon. The thing with this, it's adorable. It makes like the perfect amount of coffee, but, um... It gets so hot so fast that it burns your espresso <laughs> like every single time. So don't recommend getting a tiny one. Even if it's just you, just get the bigger one. It's a little bit of waste when it comes to ground. Just like live with it, live with that. I have since purchased this mocha pot on Amazon. I wanna say it was $22, something like that. I'll link it down below. I really do like it. It is the perfect size. It's so much easier to use and I'm not burning my fucking espresso every goddamn morning, which drives me insane because the taste and the smell of burnt, especially super dark roast coffee, any kind of coffee, it smells disgusting. So I am like, all right, it's 21 bucks, no problem. Love that for me. Then I learned how finicky it was. So I'm gonna teach you guys some of the tricks that I use that have helped me make a good cup of coffee out of this fucking mocha pot. Okay, super simple. A couple of things that you're gonna need. My favorite, like I pull up to the window of Starbucks and just the waft of coffee smell, like it just tickles my pickles, okay? So I always buy the, um, even in my drip coffee maker, I still use this. This is the Starbucks dark, dark roast espresso. Yeah, the dark roast um, espresso. And this is really fucking good. I also have the Thanksgiving blend that I have in an airtight container. I, this uh, most expensive bag of coffee I've ever fucking bought in my life, but it was 100% worth it. So you're gonna need some espresso ground coffee. You can use Cafe Bustelle if you like. Personally, I just really love the taste of Starbucks coffee, so if I'm trying to make a Starbucks drink, get Starbucks coffee, right? You're gonna need something with a flat edge, so like a butter knife or something like that. You're gonna need a little jar, something that is going to fit your little filter from your mocha pot. So this fits in here perfectly, whatever kind of cup, whatever you have around that you can hold your filter in, it'll work. Also, this is a non-negotiable for me because I fucking can't stand sediment and coffee grinds or grounds in my coffee. So you have to purchase these little AeroPress filters from Amazon. Um, there are some like off-brand ones that are really inexpensive. I think I got like 500 for eight bucks, which is like really good. Also, you can rinse these and reuse them, which I really, really like. These are great. So I highly recommend investing in these. It's a little, you know, it's just one more thing that's gonna make this whole mocha pot thing a whole lot easier for you because when I got into the mocha pot, I did not realize how finicky and fucking picky it was. And like I said, I'm here to help you. You can learn from me. Also, I did get a lot of my tips and tricks from a uh, another YouTube creator. I will link him down below. He's like very kind dad vibes. He's like a coffee lover. And I will link his video down below because his is very in depth. This is just me, you know, fast and hot, trying to give you the information, trying to throw it out there because if you're like me and you have um, a very short attention span, you don't wanna sit and listen to all the like mechanics and shit of why something is the way it is, but hey, that's just me. Okay, first thing you're gonna do is you're going to fill your water reservoir up into where the pressure release valve is and you don't wanna go any higher than that because, well, it's not gonna create pressure and it's not gonna fucking work. So 
filled it up to that line. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna be right back. I put it on the stove top, I have an electric stove top. I put it on high heat to get it boiling as fast as possible. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start filling my filter with my espresso. So I'm just going to take, I hope this is like easy to see, I really don't know. Oh, bitch. Okay, we're good, we're good. JK, JK. Okay, so we fill it up. This is usually a messy process. I usually have a plate or something underneath it to make it a little easier for me, but you know, for the sake of this video, I don't have fucking time. So it's halfway full. I shake it to where it's nice and level, and then I give it a couple of taps on the counter. You don't wanna tamp this filter down. You just wanna give it a couple of taps to settle it down. And then I'm gonna continue to fill with the rest of my coffee. Oh God, I'm about to knock this shit over because I'm too busy looking at the fucking camera. Excuse my language in this video. Um, or don't, I really don't care. Da, da, da. Okay. And you wanna slightly overfill it. As you can see, it is slightly overfilled. And then what I'm going to do, and you can do this over a sink, I'm gonna do it out of my, um, over my like knock box, and I'll get into all that shit later on. But, or in another video, I should say. Um, so, it's slightly overfilled. So, just like you would with um, like a flour, like when you're baking, you're just going to level this off. So I'm gonna do that over this, because it's messy. I'm not trying to cover my counter and shit. All right, so now it's nice and level. I like to clean the grounds off of the edge. I give it one more tap on the counter to settle it. I put it in the little jar. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach my filter to the percolator. I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so you're just gonna take your percolator and you're gonna take a filter out of your little sleeve. I didn't wanna reuse one for this video because like, I didn't want it to look a little grody. So it's, it's, I mean, just a thin little coffee filter. You're gonna place it right over the bottom and then you're just gonna take a tiny dash of water and you're just gonna fill that in to where it creates like a seal. And then you're going to maneuver the filter to where it covers the seal completely. All right, now that our water is boiling, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take some tongs and move it off of the heat. Now what we do is we put our filter or puck, whatever you wanna call it, right into here. And then I'm gonna screw the lid on, but I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm not trying to fucking burn myself. Okay, so here comes the important part. You're going to leave your lid open. Sounds fucking crazy, at least I thought I did when I saw that guy's video. I was like, you've gotta be fucking kidding me but you wanna leave it open. So right now what we're looking for is some sort of movement. We want some coffee to come out of the top. Now, don't get me wrong, I do not have the perfect extraction. I am not perfect here, but I have learned how to not burn my coffee grounds, and that is <laughs> a success for me. But what we're waiting for is just some smooth uh, liquid coming through the top, and we will see if we get that. So I do have some liquid coming through the top. I have not mastered the art of not having any sputtering or anything like that, but the, the low and slow method is what you wanna do. Um, I have it on a medium high heat and it's barely on the eye as well. It's not fully on the eye. If I feel like it's not really percolating quick enough or really like, you know, working, I'll just move it a little bit closer to the heat source. I'll feel it start to build that pressure back up let it make some coffee, and then I'll just move it back and forth as I need to. If it really starts getting hot and you smell burnt grounds, um, one of the tips the guy had in his video was to put a, a like little pot of water next to it where you can dunk it. I've not really had to utilize that, but yeah, this is basically the extraction that I'm personally looking for. It's not perfect, but it is delicious. I was burning my coffee every single day and now I actually get some really decent, it's not espresso, but it's the closest thing you're gonna get without an espresso machine, coffee. So we're just gonna let that work and I'm gonna show you guys also how I make my white chocolate mochas at home, which is my favorite, I mean, Starbucks drink. A lot of people, it's their fave faves. White chocolate mocha is very, very popular. 
Okay, so I highly recommend getting different uh, Tarani syrups. These are really good. I get them at Walmart, Target, uh, Publix, whatever. I always keep the French vanilla on deck because I love white chocolate mochas and I love uh, caramel macchiatos as well. So this uh, Tarani white chocolate mocha sauce is really fucking good. So what I do personally, I put my little Starbies cup on a scale. So a serving of this syrup is exactly 39 grams. So I shake it up. And then I measure in my 39 grams. All right, 39, 40, whatever. Put that in there. And then what I do, because I want a little extra sweetness, I will add the sugar-free French vanilla Tarani syrup. This is 30 milliliters for a serving. So I will measure that in here as well. You can use teaspoons and all that kind of shit. I just have a food scale handy. It's always on my countertop, so it's easy for me to use. So like I said, this is 30 milliliters. And then two shots of espresso. Well, one shot of espresso is one and a half ounces. So this is about two and a half ounces, which is good enough for me. I, it's late in the evening, I'm not trying to get crazy. Okay, I've added ice to my cup. And now I am just going to fill it with milk as much as I like. I know that Starbucks has the lines on the cup for a reason. I'm not a fucking barista. I really don't care. It's not that deep to me. As long as it tastes how I want it to taste, I'm happy. The main thing with the mocha pot is you don't want to overfill your filter because then you're going to get too much pressure and you're going to get coffee grounds and sediment. Really just keeping an eye on it, moving it on and off the heat, making sure it's not sputtering really wildly. And you know, keeping it on a medium low heat after already getting it boiling is gonna make your life a whole lot easier. But this is my coffee, I drink it every single morning. It's so good, it's so good, it's so good. And it's inexpensive and I love that for me. So I have some other coffee related things that I wanna show you guys in the future. But if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you would like. You can find me on, um, Instagram at Chubby Spice. You can find me on TikTok at Chubby Spice. And otherwise, I'm just out here living my life. And I hope you guys have a wonderful night and make some coffee at home and stop giving your money to these fucking billionaire corporations. Bye.